Hello and welcome back to the Iron Man Challenge. Now, when we left off, we were in, well, Salian territory and I was very low on cash. So I decided, hey, you know what? We're going to go and we're going to try and uh, speak to a couple of Ravenstone vassals, see if they can accept us to become a mercenary. And they did not want to give me that task. And I don't know why, but I spoke to three different vassals and they were in very close proximity to each other. So I didn't waste too much time because basically what I want to do is try to reduce the amount of time before the next weekly wage because otherwise we're going to go into debt and that's not going to be too good. So we'll just uh, join the Fjords Vein instead. And that's what we're going to do. So there you go. We're going to gain 1,600 dinars and we are now going to be at war against Salian, which I think is actually personally fine. I, I really don't have a problem with being at war against Salian. So yeah, there we go. We are, uh, we're done. We're done. Do, do, do you have any other quests? Uh, yeah, I need a good warrior to find me six Salian longbowmen as prisoners. Yeah, I, I fear that I cannot do that right now. Yeah, he's not going to be too pleased with me at the moment, but that's okay. We're currently being chased by these order knights as well. And there's the daughters of Persona. Ooh, ooh, wait a minute. I want to kind of fight in this battle. Uh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> you know, this is going to be kind of bad if uh, if we head in here and get absolutely murdered in many different ways. It could be could be pretty awful, but we'll see how it goes. Let's see. Uh, whoa, he's he's absolutely absolutely destroying this army right here. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is my army at the moment. We would probably... Oh, yeah, by the way, I sent off Deev. I sent Deev off to go and, uh, go and, you know, get some right to rule for us. And maybe he's going to come back and give us some troops as well. But I need to be aware that uh, I need to, to make some space, I guess, or at least have one space available. Because I'd like to hopefully get some relatively powerful units. Okay, so are they moving at the same speed or what? Oh, no, no, they're not. Okay, that's fine. Ooh, Blood Blood Valley Clan Raiders. I wouldn't mind fighting those guys, but I would like to... Uh, you know what? Okay, fine. I'm, I'm going to go in here, but it is going to... I'm going to sp spend a little bit of time just waiting, and this is the whole point. You've got to be a bit careful, a bit patient when you want to join a battle like this, and this guy wants to attack me now. That is obvious. So let's head in now. There we go. Let's move in to help our liege now. Yes. And uh, we are already above my weekly wage, which is perfectly fine. I am unfortunately still without a horse. I do have horses in my inventory, but they are not that fast. So I generally prefer to not be on one because otherwise I'm just going to get caught out by something, whether that be a lance or whether that be a thrown weapon or something along those lines. So I'm just going to use my forces as best I can in a way that will give us a potential advantage to uh, support our liege here. But it is unlikely that he's going to need my assistance, let's face it. Really, really unlikely. By the way, these are my settings. Once again, exactly the same as always. And uh, generally, I am going to be increasing the battle size as we go forward in the game. I'm not going to be keeping it at 300, but at the moment I'm just going to try and balance the amount of performance versus, uh, you know, uh, shall we say, uh, difficulty, I guess. Because here's the thing, if I have too much battle size, I'm just going to start stuttering like no one's business and it is not going to be a pretty sight. So, yeah, generally 300 is around, around a, a sweet spot for my current system that it can handle it whereas if i go a little bit above that maybe if maybe i can do you know maybe i can do 400 at a push dependent on how many units or dependent on what kind of units on the battlefield but i just want to try and reduce the amount of potential crashes that we might get as well anyway let's uh let's tell our people to charge in let's tell our cavalry to charge in everyone's charging in right now from the fierds vein and we are going to also just tell our archers to kind of hold position behind us here and here's the thing I'm not really wanting to get too many kills here. I basically just want to be in the battle and we'll see whether maybe a couple of my guys might be able to do something. Because bear in mind, this is going to be one of those times where I may very well die. I may very well die. Hello. Oh, never mind. Oh, you're dead. You are super dead. Wow, that was a that was a brutal death right there. Did you see that? 
thrown weapons to the face. And that's also something that I'm thinking we're probably going to do as well. We might try to recruit a couple of Feared's Vein units that are capable of using thrown weapons. I mean, most of them are capable of using thrown weapons, so it's going to be pretty fun. There we go. A Vecca V Knight. Oh, you know what I should have done? Should have used a blunt weapon. I've got a blunt weapon. I've got actually a much better blunt weapon than I used to, so that would have been uh, pretty good. But we did get the experience, and the experience that you're going to get for a knight at this point is like, what, 700, 600 or something like that? So I think that's pretty much worth it, and who knows, maybe I wouldn't have been able to get the kill if I'd used a different weapon. But, eh, it's a, it doesn't really matter. We've got a nice amount of renown right there, and we might very well be able to... No, no, it doesn't seem like it. We're not going to be able to take any of them prisoner either, but we are going to get a little bit of relation with Koninger Valdis, and some relation with the Feared's Vein as well, which I think is fine. That's okay. And we are going to get a couple of... Well, a couple of weapons, a decent helm, eh, it's okay. And we've got some shields as well, which I'm not really going to be giving to anyone, I don't think. And we seem to be pretty low on on on, uh, on food, actually, so I'm going to have to do something about that. But we're going to go in here. I'm going to equip a horse now because I might have... Yeah, my saddle horse is back. Oh, actually, the step horse is much better. There we go. did not realize that I had a step horse, so that's nice. Because the step horse is going to give me 41 speed instead of 37 and... I think the Sumter horses have less than that. But anyway, let's try and tackle this guy. Can you can you just leave? Uh, no, come on. Come on, Count Ivanus. Ah, uh, yeah, he's, he's actually leaving it alone now. That's fantastic. Okay, Mowbray Castle is under siege, but we're just going to leave the Feared's Vein to do whatever they want to do, basically. I'm not really going to... Yeah, okay, so we have nothing to eat. But that's that's uh, there's a good reason why, why I'm actually running after these guys instead of getting some food. Because I would like to be able to maybe take a couple of these guys prisoner and get a couple of level ups and things and maybe just maybe we'll lose a couple of units as well and that's the thing it's not my goal to lose units of course it is just the fact that i would prefer to maybe thin out oh really you really killed a refugee are you serious i told my fodder to stand back but they just got murdered nevertheless that is uh yeah I, I well now that i'm a mercenary it's going to be a lot easier to actually make that work so basically what i can do now is I can literally just go and uh, do whatever I need to about buying the tools and the, the various other pieces of gear that I need for the quest. And it's going to be so much easier to do that. To, to even afford that stuff is going to be so easy. And there we go. There's level 8. Very nice. Yeah, but otherwise it is just going to be one of those things where we just need to wait a little bit of time for our weekly wages to come in. And then we'll be able to make a good go of it. Oh, look at that. More bear claw armor. This is actually fantastic armor. And it doesn't seem to have any difference between the old and the non-old variants. But that's okay. Because we have another horse here. And we can just take the rest of this stuff too. And by the way, a lot of people seem to be in favor of me playing as a horse archer. So why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. And uh, there we go. We have a refugee to replace the one that we lost, which is good. So, yeah, we are probably going to be a horse archer of some kind. I mean, I did already say that we are going to be a unit that is on a mount and does have a bow. So it's basically a horse archer anyway. So level ups are going to be a bit different. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Mercenary payment. Fantastic. Already gaining 466. That is really nice. And let's go over to Senderfall now and we'll probably try and... Mm, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to try and do. I'm going to have a look at some of the enterprises, I think. But the thing is, is that if we make an enterprise here and then the uh, and the Fiat's Vein declare war, it's going to be a bit of a sticky situation. So I'm not entirely sure whether we can do that at the moment. But I want to make an ironworks. That's 3,500. I really want to make an ironworks, though, for a very good reason. You'll see exactly why this this is exactly why. You can actually buy iron here for such a cheap price. Everywhere else you can buy iron for about 400 So buying it for 250 is insanely good value. So definitely something that we want to consider. So yeah, otherwise we are going to have to get a lot of cash. And we're going to have to get a good bow as well. A good bow is going to be very important. Maybe I can steal the one from Deve. <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind, will he? He's, he's surely not going to mind that. Yeah, he probably will. I'm actually going to keep the uh, large bag 
of arrows because that's 45 arrows good enough for me to miss all of those and still have a little bit left over all right so otherwise we're going to buy some grain here because of course we need some food there we go uh should we sell this yeah we'll sell that shield why not okay so that's 1800 i think that is actually enough to make uh, an ironworks now and that's probably what we're going to do yep there you go that is what we're going to do and uh, it's going to take a bit of time for that to get up and running and i have 800 left so technically i do have enough to be able to well technically buy a little bit of iron here and i think we're probably going to do that actually i'm going to buy another one as well we're going to buy three iron then we'll go into the iron works and put that into the inventory uh, yeah, we can't do that just yet. It's going to take seven days. I thought I could actually put it into the inventory ahead of time, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so let's go into the tavern real quick because there might... Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did say that if I do get killed in one of these muggings, uh, that that is definitely going to be counting as a game over state. So thankfully, I have a huge amount in shield. And I will theoretically not have any problems dealing with these enemies. Oh, theoretically. I said theoretically, not, not, you know, not literally. Uh -huh. Okay. Do I have anyone else on me right now? It doesn't seem like it. No, it doesn't seem like it. Okay. Phew. Ah, yeah, that's, uh, hmm. That's definitely something we've got to watch out for in the future. We certainly can't just be like, okay, going to just go into this tavern and not have any problems whatsoever. Let's sell those prisoners. That's good for me. And we're going to continue asking about rumors, of course. We've got a bounty hunter here, Sir Jocelyn. We're not going to be taking Sir Jocelyn in the end. But bear in mind that if you do send off every single companion for right to rule, you're going to get about 50 to 60, I think. I think you're going to get like 60 right to rule from all of the companions together because they each give you three. And I think there's a lot of companions and bear in mind that if you do become a mercenary of someone like we have, then every time they make peace and so on and so forth, they will get you a little bit of extra, uh, a little bit of extra right to rule as it is from there. So that's pretty amazing. So basically, if you want to, you can become a mercenary and you can spend a little bit of time finding all the companions, getting a good amount of cash saved up, and then, well then you're going to have, well, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 right to rule in really not that much time at all. So it's pretty cool. Seems like Ravenstone's having some problems against the Kingdom of Salian, but Fiedsvein is actually at war against them as well, which is kind of interesting. Okay, well, let's level up a couple of people here. Uh, someone said that Melatine Archers are really good, so I'm going to start leveling up a couple of those as well because I haven't really ever used the Melatine units. So it's kind of a new thing for me. So it's going to be kind of fun. And we have some Vanskri Raiders. I would like to fight the Vanskri Raiders. So I'm going to try and find a uh, bigger group of them. And we have leveled up. So we have 18 in strength and 18 in agility. So technically what we can do right now is I could level up my horse archery or I could start leveling up my power draw. And I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to start leveling up our power draw because we are going to need a pretty significant amount. And I don't really mind whether I have horse archery at the moment because basically the only time as far as I'm aware that this actually comes into effect is when you're moving on a horse. Whereas if you're standing still and you're shooting from the back of the horse, then it's not actually going to affect your accuracy that much. I could be wrong about that because as I say, I haven't had that much experience as a horse archer, but in general, that's always what I've felt that horse archery does. It just makes it a lot easier for you to move around and shoot at the same time. So otherwise, let's move down here, see if we can maybe find a big band of Vanskri Raiders. Hello, there's a big band. <laughs> Somewhat. Somewhat of a big band. We might try to take him down. Oh, uh, no, no. Come on now. Come on. Uh, this is my, this is mine. I'm going to just, I'm going to just leave. I'm going to leave these. Uh, yeah. If I'd gone in with them, it would have just literally been a classic case of he's going to kill everything and my units are not going to get, well, any experience at all. So it's going to be really, really bad. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so, oh, hello. Yes, hello there. I definitely want to attack you and rush to the aid of the Yodasan farmers. These guys have some refugees available. 
that's going to be fantastic for us. And we also may be able to take a couple of them prisoner as well. And also, we do have to remember that going in to each of these taverns is actually a really good idea too, because it is going to result in potential travelers that you can speak to. And then those travelers will hopefully get us the uh, location of the Red Brotherhood hideout. And I mentioned that in the previous episode. It's going to be very important for us to try and get that. And uh, the, so the sooner the better, really. Because if we can get it within the next, mm, within the next, I don't know, few, 30 in-game days or something like that, we'll probably have a pretty decent time because then we're going to get another two in strength, another two in agility, and another two in charisma, as well as a bunch of weapon proficiencies. So it's really going to make a big difference to us. And there you go. We've got some relation increases with Odasan right there, which is really nice. And we have, ooh, various loot. Nice. Okay, pleased about that. And we have another saddle horse as well, which we can put over there. So now we have the maximum of six horses that will make us much faster on the world map. So that's going to be good too. All right, so there you go. We've got another refugee there. We can level up the worshiper. And we've got six refugees now. That's actually really nice. And we need 20 total. And I believe you can, with the quest, go to the guy. Uh, and then you can basically say to him, here is, you know, X amount of refugees. And then he will take them. And so you don't have to worry about delivering all 20 at the same time. So that's actually a really nice Really nice feature as well. As you can see, iron here is about 400, whereas I bought my iron for, uh, what was it now? Uh, two, 250. So that is a pretty significant discount. All right, so we're going to sell the various loot here. No, no reason to keep it, I guess. And we will otherwise sell everything else. There we go, another 1,300. We're making some good cash right now. That is thanks to our wonderful looting skill, in my opinion. This guy is a... Prison broker, right, prison broker, ransom broker, and we're just going to continue asking for the various things, you know, continue asking for rumors and, and stuff. Uh, no, nothing there, because you never know. Sometimes they may give you a rumor that allows you to uh, refresh the contents of some of these... Um, some of these chests and everything. And I think there's actually a chest somewhere else as well. I think there's actually... I'm just going to order my troops to attack without me because... That's... He, he, he's just being annoying, that guy. He's just being super annoying. So we're just going to do that and just get the loot and then just go away. And we are getting a lot of prisoners here as well, which is actually going to make up for all of our losses too. But bear in mind that once Deve comes back, it's going to be even better because that means that I have a little bit of space in my army as well. All right, so I'll just continue leveling up those maidens. That's nice. And we can go back into... Isn't isn't it Valenbrae that has the chest? I'm actually just going to go into the streets real quick. No, I don't think it's... I don't think it's Valenbrae. Because there, there are two different chest locations. And whether, I wonder whether it's Yavik's home or... Is it is it actually... Is it actually here? Because I know that it's on a ship. Oh, it might actually be here. Ah, that's actually going to be pretty cool. Because if we can get the contents of the chest it's going to be pretty significant profit for us so we're going to try and do that yeah yeah i think the chest is over there oh, that's that's pretty cool yeah but anyway you can continue speaking to travelers and then you can get rumors that will refresh the chests uh, once you have looted them initially they're not going to refresh the tra uh, the chests and, and until you have looted them and as you can see, there you go. Look at that. We got some bullets. Yes, we got some bullets. So yeah, in this version of Pendor, there are actually firearms. I don't know where you can get them. I really don't. But I have seen other people mention that you can get guns and so on and so forth. But I have no idea where from. So it is going to be one of those things. You can see here that there's just crossbows and so on and so forth. So not entirely sure where you can get those. Maybe it's a special... Special drop from a unique spawn or something like that. Maybe you can capture a unique spawn and then you can basically be like, okay, so uh, in exchange for you leaving Pendor, you can give me this, you know. That might be uh, something that we can think about too because it seems like a pretty pretty damaging thing. It's got 50 bullets. That's a lot, you know. That's a lot of bullets right there. So it might be pretty fun to use. There's another 1,400 dinars as well for us. So now we've got 3,400. Almost enough for another another ironworks if we really want to, you know. 
that is that is a possibility. And otherwise, Leslie, I don't think she can use this. Still, she needs to level up. So she is, oh, she's really not getting that much experience, is she? But she is only one strength away to be able to use that helmet. So that's going to be pretty good. But otherwise, let's go into the tavern here. And there is a ransom broker, of course. So we can just sell our prisoners for another thousand. Wow, that was pretty crazy. All right, yeah. So fighting Vanskri Raiders is definitely a really, really good way to make some cash. And also, I wouldn't mind fighting... Ooh, I want to fight those guys. I want to fight those heretics. Even though they have some invokers and some uh, really, really strong units, I kind of want to fight them for a uh, pretty obvious reason. They've got some Fiersvein ladies in waiting. And uh, I believe they level up into some great units. Or can become some good units. And are they, are they actually running from me? They are actually running from me. So technically... They don't think they can win against us. Although, I personally feel like they probably can. Inquisition devoted. Ooh, now, okay, so now this is kind of interesting. These, uh, this Inquisition is actually neutral to me at the moment, which is really quite fascinating. Because I always feel like the Inquisition is going to be uh, wanting to attack me, but they always seem to be neutral, so that's cool. Anyway, uh, these guys are just going to charge straight at us because they are... Are they? They are without a commander, so technically they should charge at us almost immediately. Seems like they are. Let's just charge everyone. Let's get our archers to hold position behind the hill here. And our infantry will be pretty fine. Let's tell our, uh, not our companions, our fodder to go over way, go, go far away from us. And uh, we've already killed some heretic minions right here. And then they're sending in their big guys. Let's tell our infantry to charge in now. And uh, maybe I can take a couple of these guys prisoner. Or not. Yeah, I've got to be a bit careful here. These guys can do a lot of damage very, very quickly. So it is one of those things where I just have to be wary about what I'm doing and where I'm where I'm positioned, basically. Uh, a little bit of damage there. Mm, I'm just being more careful than uh, I would be normally because, again, Iron Man challenge. So, you know, <laughs> don't really want to die. But I would like to take a couple of these guys prisoner, but I don't think that's going to happen. Unfortunately, the Melatine Free Brothers actually seem to do quite a lot of damage, so I'm pretty happy about that. And there you go. Easy victory. I'm actually really surprised that we were able to get such an easy victory there. Really am. I thought that uh, the Magnus or the Invokers were going to be super hard to defeat, but I think they may have been toned down a little bit. Because I remember in previous versions of Pendor, those units specifically were insanely powerful. They just really, really were. Really, really powerful indeed. So that's definitely something to uh, be very thankful for, actually. Okay, so we actually do have an upgraded Morningstar right here. We had a rusty one, and now we have a chipped one. So it's giving me a little bit of extra damage, and we got some new boots as well. Not bad. Not bad. All right, that's it. And there we go, Fiersvein, Lady in Waiting, and I can't actually take anyone else, which is absolutely fine, because these guys don't actually level up into anything, as far as I'm aware. So let's speak to the Fiersvein, Ladies in Waiting, and uh, yeah, now basically what you can do is you can speak to these, and you can basically say, you could accept my gratitude for freeing me, I'm sure the Fiersvein would be grateful. Or you could receive a ransom for me, but the Fears Vein would view this in an unfavorable light, or you can spend 200 gold for equipment that will allow me to fight at your side. So that's basically what you can decide to do with them. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get some honor for releasing them. And that's what happens when you do this. As you can see, we get a lot of relation with people as well. And we're going to do the same thing here too. Technically, I could go over to the troop tree and I could actually show you what they become otherwise. So where are the... Oh, you can't actually, sh oh, you can't actually show them. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Maybe you can see on the other screen. Wow, it's really cool that they've got a whole whole troop tree uh, of all these people. Now, Doom Guides are so incredible. They are fantastic units, but they're usually not on your side. So, yeah, they're, they're not very good to be up against. Um, I'm going to sell one of these. Uh, no, we need, a, we need all the Sumter horses we can get, don't we? So, I guess I'll sell this. And then we can... Technically, we could buy that iron for 332. That's pretty good. That's not too bad. And is there anything in here? Uh, there's this guy. We will... Uh, can, can we not... 
Ah, oh, apparently I can't learn anything from him. Okay, interesting. These guys don't have anything. There's an adventurer. Brother Randolph. Brother Randolph is pretty cool. So yeah, you can see here, look at this. Uh, basically what... Oh, this is actually kind of cool. So if you don't know anything about Pendor, the hidden mines of Alaziz are basically where you can create rune weapons with Qualys gems. And usually you would need to give Brother Randolph a Qualys gem to be able to see where the mines are. Or at least that's what I... That's what I did in the past, as, from what I can remember. And uh, they are uh, apparently have changed that to a large pouch of diamonds. So that is actually really good. That is a fantastic change in my opinion. Otherwise, he has a bunch of books here. And this one increases Noldor relations, which is very important later on. All right. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. All right. So, yeah, we'll just, we'll just continue onward then, I suppose. We'll just continue onward. And uh, maybe we'll try and find a couple more Vanskaries and... Maybe, uh, maybe even a, uh, mm, no, no. Uh, do these guys have, oh, never mind. They, they got murdered. They got murdered by Lord Olaf Oakenshield. And now I'm going to get murdered by these guys. Wow, they are moving fast. Four point, wait a minute. What? Why were they moving so fast before and now they're not moving that fast at all? Weird. Okay, that is kind of weird. But anyway, we're just going to let them move on and then we'll just make our way over here. What's going on here? They're attacking some Azidahaka Death Cult Marauders. Mm, I would like to actually join this battle, but I feel... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's also kind of the reason why I was a bit hesitant. Because I kind of wanted to restore or in at least improve my relation with the Order of the Dawn or the Knights of the Dawn and uh, try to get them to neutral. But uh, yeah, I was a bit too late to get into that battle. And I just want to actually have a look at my faction relations right now, a few relations with Knighthood Orders. So you can see here that I actually have only minus 10 with the Knights of the Dawn. So it would be very easy for us to actually get into a better situation with them. But I think it's going to be quite difficult to actually get into a fight where we are going to be up against someone, uh, you know, someone that's actually at war against us as well. Because they usually fight people that are, well, smaller than them, of course. So I don't know how we can do it, but... Yeah, otherwise, uh, Vanskri, Vanskri Raiders, do we have some? Do we have some of these Vanskri Raiders? I don't know. I can't, I can't see any right now. But I guess, yeah, well, I, I oh yeah, by the way, in my off-screen time, I did have a brief idea to go into the arena. And going into the arena would be a pretty, pretty decent idea, you know? It would be a pretty decent idea in general, because what it does is if you win, or at the very least, if you stay alive until the very end, hired assassins. They want to kill me. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm actually going to attack them in a second. Um, yeah, but anyway, if you go into the arena and you stay alive and you're the last man standing, then you will gain 2,000 dinars, which is an absolutely fantastic way of making cash in Pendor with literally no threat to your own life. Uh, specifically, you know, if you're doing the Iron Man challenge. If you're not doing the Iron Man challenge, then you don't really need to worry about it too much. But the point is, is that in general, that sounds like a fantastic idea and definitely something that maybe I would have done if I created more of a, mm, more of like a self-sustaining fighter kind of character. Because if I created a character with like, I don't know, a base of 15, 16 strength, and then had another four points to level it up to like 19 strength or something at level one, then I would have been able to get, what, uh, six in power strike or something. Like, well, actually, yeah, six in power strike straight off the bat. And then it would have been super easy to win these arena fights uh, with a good amount of iron flesh as well. So that's definitely something also if you are, uh, you know, not not incredibly good at uh, running around and not getting yourself killed because like me, you know, I uh, generally tend to be a bit uh, wary of those kinds of things. And uh, it's kind of hard to stay alive sometimes. 
but we're doing okay so far. We're doing all right. So let's just sell all of this. I'm going to keep this shield because I think we can give that to Leslie and she definitely needs a shield. That's for sure. Can she use this? No, it's 13 strength. Are you serious? Wow, that's crazy. All right, so she still hasn't leveled up. I'm actually really surprised because generally people are going to get a decent amount of uh, decent amount of experience just from literally being in the fight, but it seems like that's not the case here, which is kind of strange. But oh well, never mind. Ah, ooh, ooh, oh yeah, Valkyries. As we've as we've discussed previously, I don't think. Oh, there's some fierce vein ladies in waiting. I really actually want to fight those. Oh well. Well, not fight the not not fight the ladies in waiting, but fight the the band that actually has those guys in their uh, prisoners' hold. So that would be pretty fantastic, actually. Oh uh, well, never mind. Maybe we will get there. Maybe we won't. But it would be really cool if we could. And uh, yeah, I actually need to tell my fodder to hold position because they continually get themselves. Ooh, okay. Hello, hello. They continually get themselves killed. Uh, I was gonna say. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Let's let's be careful. Let's let's be careful. <laughs> uh, 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 okay. Yeah. This is great. Okay. There we go. Take him down at least. Oh, this is this is interesting. There we go. Take take her out. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, we're going to lose a bunch of people right here. We're losing a bunch of people. That is to be expected when I have been taken out of the battle so incredibly. It really is. Okay, so maybe I can now do some damage. Oh. You know, it's always those times when I'm running really, really fast on a horse, and I'm like, yeah, I'm running really fast. I'm going to get a massive speed bonus right here. And then all of a sudden, I miss. It's just such a such a huge letdown. But there you go. That was a close, close battle right there. Uh, thankfully, we did get seven renown for it. We did lose a couple of people. Not too bad, I'd say. Because we are going to get rewarded with a huge amount of really, really good loot that will actually be usable by most of our companions. And that's going to be a big deal. That is going to be a really, really big deal. All right, so we can also take some people prisoner here, and whoa, a lot of people leveled up from that. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Leslie, for finally leveling up. Okay, seven strength, and now we can also level up something else for her, but I actually don't even know what to level up with her right now, because Anson, he's probably going to be either a medic, or he's going to become a lord of some kind, because he does have a really good nature, apparently. His nature is really good. He has, like, upstanding or good-natured or something. So it could just be that we might want to make Leslie into kind of like a backup medic. But they can they can both become really good fighters. So maybe I just want to increase her power strike just so that she can actually start getting some kills uh, a little bit more often. Because at the moment she's not really capable of doing that. So let's just get her some, some new gear. And, whoa, Vanskri helmet? That's actually much better than what I'm wearing. Nice. Cool, cool. Actually, this is really good. All of this is actually really good. Okay, nice. I like it. And maybe we can give give her a new new thing there. Uh, we can give her some throne. Oh, she can't use the throne, throne weapons. That's kind of a shame. Okay, I guess I'll just give her these throne weapons and then she can just use that. And anything else? Yep, she can definitely use some new boots. Fantastic. Okay, so Leslie's now perfectly kitted out in some really nice stuff. And we can give... Anson, who is this? This is Anson, right? Yeah, Anson. We can give him some new stuff too. And mm, he's already using the loot, which is a pretty good shield. And I think that's perfectly fine. He can level up though, so we should probably spend some points. Gonna get him some more. Should I get him some more strength? Yeah, I think I should get him some more strength. Let's go for another point in first aid as well. And we'll just level up our one-handed proficiency and we'll see how that goes. And we've got a Ravenstone Archer right there and some Maiden Waters. Okay, that's great. Okay, so we're going to continue leveling up Strength right here. And we will level up Power Draw once again. And I am going to need to start using a bow relatively soon. Because otherwise my proficiency is just going to be way too low for it to actually be useful in the end. And I'm going to try and get into a battle with this Ravenstone fellow. Because I would like to be able to rescue these Fierdsvane ladies-in-waiting. 
And if I could do that, that would be fantastic. Come on, guys. Could you just rush there? Uh, they're moving at about the same speed, which is actually really bad. And I don't know whether we're going to actually get into the battle with him if he's nearby. And I'm actually very low in HP. But it's a pretty cool way to get honor. And it's a really, really nice way to get relation with the faction you're with as well. So it would be cool if we could make this work. You know, it would work if this guy just turned around. Count Ivanus. Oh, there we go. Okay, we might actually get in here. Oh, who's that? Oh, no, it went to nighttime, so I couldn't see. Uh, yeah, those guys have a decent amount of... Oh, yeah, they have a lot of... Ooh, they got a rogue Blackheart Squire. That's pretty cool. I wonder whether I go in here, whether it's actually going to give me the ability to uh, join with them. No, it doesn't. Okay, so I'm going to have to leave, unfortunately. I didn't want to do that, but... Well, we'll see how it goes. I mean, they're going to they're gonna catch up. We just have to be on the ball to uh, go in as soon as they catch. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Okay, they've been caught. Let's go in and go and help Lord Gustav. And there we go. Okay. Phew. That was, uh, that was close. I hope that we'll be able to get to uh, rescue those, uh, those people. And we will be able to tell our fodder just to hold position here as well. Otherwise, we're just going to tell everyone to charge in because, as I say, Deev is going to be returning relatively soon. And he's going to give us a, uh, well, probably, uh, what is it now? Between like 8 and 10 weak units, 100%. And then we have like a percentage chance to gain uh, some average units as well as elite units. And that would be really fun. So even if I do end up losing a couple of people here and there, we're just making space for those guys. Even though I'm pretty sure that even if you have just one space in your army, you're going to be able to exceed the cap just literally because it's one of those things where you just get given a bulk of units. And if you have 70 as your max, then and you have you know 68 or whatever uh, spaces, or you have 68 field spaces, then you're going to be able to still get a whole bunch. So, yeah, there's there's also that. Got to be a bit careful here. Uh, yeah, I'm not really able to do that much damage at the moment because we are on a hill and it is making things a bit difficult. Uh, yeah, I was hopeful that we'd be able to take that guy prisoner. Isn't that always the way? I'm always like, oh, yes, I was hopeful that I'd be able to take that guy prisoner and this one and this one and this one. Yeah, that's always me. All right, well... Hopefully we'll be able to rescue them. Do I? Do I get a chance to rescue them? Yes, I do. One of them, in actual fact. Okay, that's actually really good. Doesn't really matter whether there were two and I just get one. Just getting one is perfectly fine. So we're just going to let them go once again. Look at this. We're getting so much relation with the Feared Vein right now, which is actually kind of amusing if we do end up joining the Dashar, which is what I think maybe I'm, I'm leaning towards at the moment because, as I say, if we're going to play like more of a horse archer style, then having a whole bunch of horse archers in our army is a pretty good idea. I would like to fight those Blood Valley clan raiders as well, but I think I'd like to head to Senderfall instead. Because I'd like to sell some stuff. I'd like to sell these things. I'm, I'm going to just sell this shield because I don't even know why I'm keeping it, to be honest. And we'll sell the remaining stuff because Deev does not need any upgrades. There we go. Oh, yes, another thousand. Very nice. And we should buy some food, shouldn't we? We're almost going to run out of food again, and then Anson's going to complain. Okay, there we go. Okay, how are my ironworks doing? Are we almost ready to start production, fellow? Yes, it seems like we're, we're ready to start production now. So I'm going to just put all of this iron in here, and we are going to be buying some more with all of my cash. And we're going to be putting that in there. Ah, if I can click on the right thing. There we go. All right. So let's put all of that in there too. Oh, yes. That is going to be so much cash we're going to be getting from this. It's going to be really nice. Okay, so let's just wait here for some time, try and restore ourselves. And and maybe, just maybe, our weekly wages are going to come through. If our weekly wages... Yeah, there we go. So our weekly wages, as you can see, we're getting an ironworks at Senderfall that is giving us 800 every single week. And you can see that we're already in the money. A thousand profit pure profit without me doing anything else without me getting any loot without me uh selling any prisoners or anything like that we're just getting massive amounts of profit right there and bear in mind 
that it uses two iron per week. And uh, it would have normally given us 300. So we're gaining a profit of 500 from that. And two iron is about, fi is about 500. But think about this. It is paying us dividends to get this up and running really, really fast because we're just going to get that massive amount of profit over time. And it's going to pay, pay itself back in so much less time than a weavery and dye works. And uh, Senderfall has just an amazing amount of iron production, which is just great in itself. And if I wanted to, what I could do is instead of buying tools here, I could actually sell the tools or give the tools to another another faction and see how that goes. But yeah, pretty happy with how that's going. 450 for our prisoners as well. Let's ask for any rumors. Ooh, hello. Oh. Yes. No, no room in my party. Are you serious? Oh, I am super annoyed and kind of sad now. Okay. Uh... Uh, no, oh, yeah, no, it's, you know, yeah. that was sad. I don't know whether he's going to be able to give that to me again. If he is, then that's, that's fantastic, but I highly doubt we will get the opportunity. Uh, it's a very militia, I guess. I don't know. He's not going to give me that opportunity again, I'm pretty sure. No, of course not. Okay, well, I guess what we could do instead is we could get Sorain. I think he is about 6,000. Is he? 5,000. Hmm, good, good. Okay, there you go. Fantastic. So, yeah, we'll just get Sorain instead. And we could get some adventurers as well. We can only hire one of them because we don't have that much money anymore. We've only got 378, but that's absolutely fine. Don't mind about that too much. All right, so... Yeah, at least we've gotten our first little uh, enterprise up and running, and we are now mercenary, and we're going to see what happens as we go forward. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.